And I'll share one bad habit of mine. I was just thinking about it uh, earlier today. Uh, I would like to stop buying extra snacks at the grocery store um, or essentially do not go to the grocery store hungry and leave with a snack and eat on the way home. Terrible habit of, uh, habit of mine. But let's get into the presentation. Um, yes, yeah, so week five of the Essentials of Wellness program. Um, we're going to be talking about and focusing on habits and willpower. Um, good kind of combo uh, kind of topic or, or essentially two topics um, for us to talk about here, especially um, for those here in the U.S., um, as we lead into kind of the, the Thanksgiving holiday, but in general for everyone else as well, just any other upcoming holidays um, and just that notion of, um, you know, good, bad habits. Also, then that willpower. Um, I, I like to kind of think of willpower as um, the mental toughness as well, but um, I'll be speaking to habits uh, and then uh, Isaac will be speaking to willpower. So um, hopefully you can get some good takeaways, maybe take some good notes, um, and yeah, learn a little bit more about habits and willpower. So most of us know what a habit is or may have heard of habits and the habit loop. But again, um, a habit is a behavior that is repeated regularly. Um, it can be an action, a routine, or a lifestyle type habit. Um, habits kind of have this, what's called a habit loop. Um, there's different words to this kind of circular or cyclical sequence, um, but we are going to use um, the cue, the routine, and the reward. Um, you'll also hear me, uh, um, <clears throat> as I speak to more of this, uh, trigger as well uh, for the notion of cues. But uh, a cue is anything that triggers the habit, um, good or bad. So that could be a location, time of day. Uh, other people can uh, trigger a habit, um, emotional state, or immediately preceding an action. So like one of the, the um, most immediate examples that I have for um, you know a cue or a trigger is the music from the ice cream truck. Uh, if you remember, or I don't even know if they still have ice cream trucks roaming the streets uh, anymore. But but yes, that music, that jingle, that chime from the the ice cream truck roaming the streets, you hear that, and it's that cue. Boom, ice cream. Um, then next, following the cue or the trigger is the routine, the behavior you wish to change. Um, you know, one could be biting your nails uh, or um, even it's the behavior that, that you want to reinforce. So like taking the stairs instead of the elevator, maybe parking in the back of the parking lot and walking um, a longer distance to the store. Um, and then finally, in that circle, that habit loop, the reward. Um, so it provides positive reinforcement to the desired behavior. So there's things like um, tangible rewards. Um, so in that ice cream truck aspect, um, the ice cream itself. There's also intangible rewards like 30 minutes of television um, or something with no value at all. Um, and I always think of like gold stars or even like a, a token, um, if you will. So habits um, and also that kind of that deeper formation of uh, you know the habit loop. So when it comes to building a well-established loop, remember 21. It takes 21 days to build a well-established habit. So when it comes to kind of the bigger question of changing or removing a habit, um, knowing the stage that requires the, um, a change will help you kind of strategize um, the change that you want to make. So first off, um, thinking of maybe the outcome or the reward, um, you might want to make an adjustment to your routine. Uh, so if it's a new outcome that you seek, um, you will need to decide the new outcome, the habit needs to achieve. So then you will likely need uh, to just make adjustments to that routine as well. So again, new outcome that you want, you're gonna need to make an adjustment to your routine. And then on the other side, maybe uh, you know it's a routine change to better reach the outcome. Um, evaluation of your current, uh, when you evaluate 
um, why your current routine is not working, um, you will have to then decide on the appropriate changes to your uh, current routine to help you achieve that reward or that outcome. Um, and then when it comes to uh, changing or removing a habit, um, let's think of uh, what most people might be doing is eliminating a bad habit. Um, so targeting the cue of the bad habit um, is, a, is a good uh is a good starting approach. Um, and that could simply be trying to avoid being in an environment or situation that might trigger the habit you want to eliminate. Um, and then some for some people, you might be having um, good success, uh, whether it's now through the Essentials of Wellness program, um, or maybe it's just you want to uh, do more of a good habit that you um, that you have. Um, add new triggers or new cues that will help prompt your routine. And then therefore, just by adding those new triggers, um, you will do more of that good habit. So as we think back to that 21 days, it, it is important to remember um, that it's not just a flat concrete 21 days, then I have a you know a new habit. Um, you know, or, um, you know, I can re remove that habit. Um, it might take a little extra time depending on um, some of those aspects, the triggers, the routine, the cues, and how you, um, and, and other things that come up in life. But um, more, most importantly, as I kind of wrap up habits here, um, when changing or re removing a habit, it will take conscious time and effort, um, even willpower, if you will. So you will need to be patient when it comes to changing uh, or, or adding a, a good habit or changing a bad habit. Um, actively remember the change to your habit and to do the habit when triggered. Likewise, if you are removing a habit, remember to actively avoid the habit's trigger. This can be avoiding an environment or getting yourself into specific situations. So yes, it'll take conscious time and effort. So. Um, like I said earlier, most of us, I think, understand or, or um, know uh, the, the aspect of habits. And I think what it really boils down to is what I'm going to um, hand over to Isaac um, is the willpower aspect. And, and like I said, that mental toughness almost. So Isaac, share with us willpower. All right. Yes. And habits, willpower kind of lead right, right into each other. And so what we'll kind of go over today is just like the actual definition of willpower, the limitations of it, and a few strategies that can help keep your willpower up. So willpower, the ability to delay gratification, resisting short-term temptations in order to meet long-term goals. So, so to speak, keeping your eyes on the prize having the power to keep moving along down the road, staying focused on the goal with whatever you're trying to do to help knowing that that goal is gonna help you lead to better things in life. So how do we resist those short-term short -term temptations and how do we tap into the will power um, more often? Uh, first, we need to understand like a resource, like most resources, willpower is a limited supply. So we all have it, all right? We just naturally have that will. Um, and something I found interesting was The Power of Habit, uh, a book called The Power of Habit. Uh, willpower is actually considered a real form of mental energy powered by glucose in the uh, bloodstream and is used up as you exert self-control. So in thinking about that, the preferred energy source of the brain is glucose. And if you are con like consistently exerting self-control throughout your day, it makes it very clear as to why dieting is so difficult because you need willpower to diet. And the only way you get willpower is through sugar, right? So now as your well-being specialist, I would not advise you going to the candy shop and loading up on willpower. So loading up on candy. Uh, uh, there's some called a sugar crash that will destroy any willpower that you're hoping to be gained from that process. And just know that just through a uh, healthy, well-balanced diet, you are going to be able to meet those glucose needs. So real, the real issue is doing things throughout your day 
that is going to um, limit using that self-control that's going to tap into already already available willpower that you have within you. So think about this, the, this, the number of decisions that you make just in work alone is going to affect that, that willpower level within you. Uh, a study by the University of Chicago found that people with the best self-control are the ones who use their willpower less often throughout their day. So instead of fending off one urge after another, these people set up their lives to minimize temptations. Uh, being proactive in advance so they avoid crises and conserve their willpower reserves. Um, willpower is like a muscle. It gets tired as you work throughout the day. As you work harder, it gets tired. So the more willpower you, 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 you lose up through your day, the less you will have later, which kind of makes sense why late night snacking is so tempting. Um, so what can you do? Uh, I'm going to go over a, a few suggestions on how to best utilize your willpower in order to affect change in your life here. This next slide. So to start, since willpower is limited, begin by breaking down your day and trying to eliminate as many micro decisions as possible. As I mentioned, work alone, especially I'm sure all the work that you do at Medtronic is going to come with a lot of important decisions throughout your day. And that's just work. Um, you think about the big individual decisions or family decisions that you have to make outside of work. And then on top of all that, you, you try to have these micro decisions of what do I eat for lunch? What do I even get at the grocery store? What am I wearing? What should I wear today? You know, you're waking up at 6 a.m. What should I wear today? Um, I don't know if you've ever tuned into Kyle's flex breaks Monday through Thursday, but he is always wearing the same thing or something very, very similar. And of course, we like to give Kyle a hard time about this, but in reality, choosing something to wear every day in the morning can create a couple of handful, a couple handful of decisions that wouldn't need to be made with a little planning ahead of time. Um, so in wrapping up this first point, looking at your day and seeing what micro decisions you can eliminate by me being more proactive to help keep your willpower supply elevated. Uh, something we have already done in this for the second point here that uh, in this program is creating a smart goal. Having it written out, having that seen that is has been known to really help make that more clear and concrete. And taking that SMART goal a step further, think about really why you are trying to do the thing that you're doing. Like, I want to get, you know, if, you, if it's the goal of, well, I just want to get stronger, why do you want to get stronger? Are you trying to get out of pain? Uh, are you trying to be able to pick up your kid without pain? You know, things of like, what is intrinsic, intrinsically motivating you to do that said habit or goal, um, help keep your willpower elevated there. Another uh, one at a time. So change one habit at a time. So with a finite supply of willpower, it's tough enough to just reach one goal. So take that one goal at a time. For example, don't take on exercising, be nicer to your coworker and being earlier for carpool all at the same time. Just take one of those and go for it. Uh, having to exert more and more self-control by changing more and more habits uh, throughout your day is going to leave your will so willpower supplies low. Uh, why do four tasks at 25% when you can do one task at 100%? Um, in the past, I read a book called The Power of Less and it really breaks down and has you go into a much deeper dive of just like, you know, what are your values, all that stuff. And I strongly advise if this is like a something that you want to look forward to or look into more reading that book. Um, uh, point number four, combining a new habit with one 
uh, or combining a new habit or with one that you're wanting to start or eliminate with a well-established habit is a great way to help limit self-exertion to keep your willpower supply in check. An example of this would be uh, like, I call it the French press example or just coffee example in, in general. Um, try, if you're, let's say you're trying to, one of your goals is you wanna try and meditate more throughout the day, um, but you're having issues of when do I do it? When should I do it? All that, all that jazz. So maybe in the morning, if you're a coffee drinker, you already are making coffee every morning. It's, it's automatic. You don't even think about it. It just, it just happens. You take zero willpower to really get to the coffee machine, to the French press, and uh, put the coffee in the coffee maker and start making it. Well, in that time, while either, so let's say it's a French press, or even just a coffee machine, as that coffee is brewing, or as the beans are soaking in with the water, instead of just kind of hanging around, take some time, do that five minutes of meditation as you're waiting for your coffee. Uh, a lot of studies have shown that combining this one established habit with a new one is going to lead to greater success. All right. And uh, to start small, uh, point number five there, uh, depending on the new habit or practice you're wanting to start, do that activity for just five minutes and see where it goes from there. Uh, most of you have at least five minutes and being able to mark that five minutes down as a completed uh, task will create a higher sense of accomplishment as well as giving yourself results. You might think, well, five minutes isn't gonna give me that much to do. Well, if you think of the, the Fit and Five handbook that we have within this program, uh, we had uh, Teresa on Yammer say how she was implementing five minutes of planks every day. And just those five minutes led to noticeable changes in, she said, her core strength, her posture, her mm -hmm. mood. So just, just knowing that that time adds up. And especially with something like exercise, exercise is a pretty big commitment if you think of it as a whole. Right. So maybe starting slow with that five minutes and then continuing on to see maybe you do more or the five minutes is benefiting you. Great. That's a new habit. That's helping your willpower. Go for it. Um, let's see. So it takes so and, and another one, too, is uh, rewarding yourself often. And I don't think I do that enough. I don't think a lot of people do that enough when trying to start a new habit. Uh, so take, you know, time, as Kyle said, with that 21 days, change can take some time. And to help give yourself that sense of accomplishment each day by starting your new habit, reward yourself often. Uh, and as Kyle mentioned, that, that, uh, that reward system that we just have implanted in us uh, with giving yourself something for, hey, I did five, five minutes, I'm going to I'm going to, uh, you know, reward myself with whatever something that, that is that you'd like to do. So just giving yourself rewards, giving yourself some uh, like a, an A plus for doing that for the day is great. And then uh, get social support is another big one, uh, whether it be a workout buddy, um, I don't know, a meditating buddy, a, a sharing recipe, a recipe, healthy recipes buddy. Uh, uh, some sort of virtual challenge, or even, hey, even a, a wellness program offered by uh, your workplace here. Uh, having that sense of community and support is going to help you stay more accountable and in turn, conserve and increase your willpower as you're feeding off the energy of others, creating that motivating environment to, to, to accomplish what you are set to accomplish. Um, and just in general, rather than being on this tiny little wellness island, you're having a sense of community helping you get to what you are trying to accomplish. So that is what I have on willpower. Um, 
Kyle, I think you're going to take over the five minutes of fitness here for our homework specifically, because we he's got a fun little uh, worksheet for you all to do. Yes. Um, ooh, real quick question as I open up the chat. Uh, any tips for rewards other than food? <laughs> um, that's a great question. Yeah. yeah, very good question, because that's honestly that is what I venture towards as well. Um, but, um, Nancy just said books. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it can be anything that, you know, can give yourself positive reinforcement. So, um, you know, maybe you are working on changing a, uh, a habit, uh, you know, over a course of 21 days and you've had success for maybe a week, you know, and, and I, I love that book one. Maybe you say, you know, if I am consistent for seven days, I'm going to go to the bookstore. I'm going to go, um, you know, online and, and purchase a, a new book, you know, something like that. Yes. Um, you know, there, there, there's definitely other things that is not food, but I know, <laughs> and I, I am this case as well. I'm so oriented towards food as a reward. Um, ooh, here's one. Uh, and I, I actually did this, uh, um, a couple of years ago, um, I had a weight loss goal. I wanted to lose 10 pounds. I wanted to, you know, to reach a certain weight um, a couple of years ago. And so my reward, and I know that this is not for everyone, but uh, my reward was a tattoo, some ink on my skin. Um, but, uh, but yes, I mean, there's, there's definitely other options out there. Um, yeah, new piece of clothing uh, or a haircut. So yeah, that's what yes. I would recommend was that that new piece of clothing, like banking, like every day you do that habit is like an extra, like it's like three dollars towards that that thing of clothes, that whatever article of clothing you're wanting to get. I also like to get a nice new haircut, get the full get the full thing when you get that haircut. You know, the full head massage and everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah. As we move on into kind of the, the homework uh, piece and the five minutes of fitness, feel free to keep throwing in, plugging in new, um, just other reward ideas. Um, Cause collectively all 59 of us can come up with some, you know, some other ideas that are not food related for, for uh, a reward system. Yeah. I like the, the idea of like a pedicure manicure one as well. Um, so for week five homework, uh, we are asking you to fill out the seven F's wheel. Um, this will be sent out in the, the follow-up email later, later today. Uh, there is a worksheet and a fillable uh, worksheet as well. So you can just do it right on your computer. Um, so this 7Fs wheel has, uh, it's a great um, habit, a great lifestyle, a, a great um, kind of wellness evaluation tool. Um, and so, you know, for us this week, I'm thinking if you are having a hard time, um, kind of picking, you know, uh, a habit that you want to, um, uh, make adjustments with, or even, um, you know, you're wondering why, uh, you know, you're, you're having issues or, 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 or challenges with, um, creating good habits, um, or good routines. Um, this might be a good place and this is a good place to, to do um, on your own time as evaluation to your overall wellness and your overall satisfaction. Um, so there's seven different F's here, faith, family, finances, fitness, friends, fun, and future. Um, and then each of these spokes has a, a rating uh, that you get to rate your satisfaction level um, within each of these spokes on this wheel. So um, one key point here, uh, when you do this worksheet, and I, I highly recommend doing this, um, is the, the number values. Um, again, it's, it's always that satisfaction uh, rating and not necessarily a, you know, if you, you know, do you do this or not kind of a thing. So um, always remember that one is a satisfaction score where one couldn't get any worse. And then 10 at the highest level uh, couldn't get any better. Um, and then as you go through um, in a clockwise fashion on this wheel from faith uh, all the way around to future, um, these aren't these are more so deeper kind of thinking and, and deeper evaluation than just kind of the black and white aspect. Uh, so like my example is the, the finance uh, F. Uh, so it's not how much money you make or how much money you have in your pocket or your po portfolio. The key thing is, is 
um, you know, how satisfied, how satisfied are you with the money that fund your priorities? Same thing with fitness as the example. It's not, do you exercise um, or how much you exercise? You know, it's that satisfaction level of exercise, um, your, um, your wellness, your biometrics as well. Um, so um, this, as you see from kind of my uh, the circles and the lines that connect uh, the dots, if you will, um, this is my wheel that I did today. So you guys kind of get a glimpse of uh, where I stand as of, you know, today uh, in November. Um, so when you are marking your, your points, um, feel free to connect all those circles and then um, determine and see uh, would your wheel roll efficiently and optimally? And so in all fairness, uh, and I'm sure there's plenty of you that are thinking, well, I could mark threes um, for all seven aspects. And yeah, my wheel would roll. But if you go back to the satisfaction scoring aspect, three is a lower satisfaction score. Um, and you know that smaller circle is not going to roll and move as efficiently as you know that 10 um, rating for all seven aspects. Um, so yes, we want that wheel um, to to roll efficiently and optimally and that um, that higher satisfaction, um, that more larger rounded wheel will um, allow you to you know kind of move and create energy more positively um, in your life. So yes, um, this is the homework today uh, for this week. Um, and I, like I said, the PDF will be sent out with the follow-up email. Um, be sure to come back to these slides uh, if you uh, have questions um, or the PDF does have some good um, information, guidance and outline with some of those specifics. Again, you know, when it comes to like finances, it's not, do you make enough money? It's how satisfied are you with your money, uh, how your money funds your priorities. And then same thing with faith. It's not, you know, do you practice, re, you know, re, uh, are you religious or do you practice religion? It's just, it's more of that, um, you know, how satisfied uh, are you with your spiritual life? And Isaac, you yeah. want to talk about yeah. spots? Yeah, let's see here. Okay. My spotlight right now, Kyle, I can't tell. Oh, give me one second. I know I got quite the mess just with sharing everything. There. And yep, you're good. Okay, so for that Fit and Five handbook, uh, th this week is going to be squats. So we're going to get those squats in order this, uh, this week. And it's just five minutes. And once again, it's six out of the eight weeks of the program, and you'll earn your credit for those fit and five uh, challenges. So uh, I'll show you two, a couple different variations of how you can do your squats. Uh, something I would like to say is as you're doing these squats, you always want to keep that core engaged. So your core, your abs are always contracted. You're, it's like you're getting ready to take a punch in the stomach. So you're, you're clenching your abs at all times during these, these squats. And all you're going to do is you're going to sink your hips back and you can do a quarter squat. You can go down not very far if you have like, if you're, if you're worried about your knees, you can do like a half squat or you can try to go the full 90 down into a squats, uh, keeping your back nice and flat, just letting your hips sink back as you're doing that. Uh, something you can do a slow control pace for that lower impact squat. Or you can do more of a fast pace for that, that moderate impact squat. Or the other option in the video for that more higher impact squat is doing a full squat jump if you want to. And I'll just show that just for, just for the sake of it. Um, when you're doing either, either version of these squats, I want you to try and press up through your heels while not letting your knees come in towards the midline of your body. So if you're squatting down and you're noticing your knees come in, Take your knees, bring them out, further out. That's going to target better spots uh, in your glutes and legs like that. Okay, and you can also switch up your, your stance as well. If you want to do more of a sumo squat, more of a wide stance squat, you want to do a narrow squat, just switch it up throughout those, those five minutes to help keep your uh, hit different parts of your leg 
uh, legs and just keep it a little more interesting for yourself. So yeah, get core engaged, press up through your heels, nice flat back and avoid your knees moving inward or past your toes. So always positioning your weight onto your heels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to interject a couple of things. Um, I know squats are um, a phenomenal compound movement and, and can kind of be intimidating with its complexity. Isaac, if you don't mind going back to that spot, um, just for demonstration purposes. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So along with what Isaac is sharing and demonstrating, um, two more points just with the setup um, of your squats. So your stance uh, should be about shoulder width apart. Um, you don't want to go underneath the hips. Um, you know, so your feet more in that narrow stance. Um, you don't ideally want to do that. Um, it becomes a little bit you know more challenging um, and and a little bit tougher structurally as well. So feet about shoulder width apart. And then the last point here, because I see this all the time with. Uh, like personal exercise programs, personal training, even our group exercise classes is the direction that the hips go when lowering yourself down. So if you could go, Isaac, in that profile view, because it gives it kind of more of that side. So as you watch Isaac, look at that, uh, look at where his hips and glutes go. As he squats down, he lowers his hip back behind his heels, keeping his chest and shoulders upright in a natural angle. So that helps with Isaac's point that helps uh, bring your weight distributed through your back to mid portion of your foot. So that way you're not shifting your weight forward. Um, and can you demonstrate that kind of poor form again with yeah. the knees yeah. coming forward yeah. over the like toes? Those knees, those knees coming past our toes. Yeah. Like when the heels coming like up. That. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but yes. Yeah. This is, you can notice the hip, my whole weight is shifted towards the front of my body rather than just like, you're gonna sit back in a chair. Is oftentimes what I would say. It's just like, you're sitting back in that chair, bring your hips back and away from you. Yeah. yeah. Those are the other last two things I wanted to share just cause I know um, a lot of people do, do have questions and, and concerns when it comes to doing squats. Um, but those are the, you know, what Isaac shared and then the two things that I had in addition. Um, those are great uh, points for doing your squats and things to consider uh, while you're doing your five minutes. Um, but yes, that is it for week five. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining. Um, thanks, Isaac, for doing some squats <laughs> in front of us. <laughs> hey, anytime, um, anytime. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, thank you to for everyone uh, uh, for being here and in, uh, some of those ideas for rewards um, that aren't food related. Uh, I love that. Um, so some great ideas, um, in that are not <laughs> food related, but, um, yes, uh, seven F's wheel homework, do your, continue doing your exercise. Uh, and then yes, have fun with, uh, the five minutes uh, of squats this week. That is it from us. Thank you. Take care.